Hey everybody, welcome into this Adobe Illustrator tutorial. I'm Nathaniel Dodson from tutvid.com. Today we're going to be creating something that looks a little bit like this. Yep, that's right. We're going to make that thing completely in Adobe Illustrator. It's going to be awesome. If you do enjoy this tutorial, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Use that red button down below. That way you never miss another Adobe Illustrator tutorial in the future. And if you'll really enjoy the tutorial, hey, well, there's a link that just appeared up there. You can pick up a copy of my Photoshop course. It's the best way to support this channel. And this channel is funded entirely by viewers just like you. So thank you. And let's jump into this video. So here we go. This is the piece of artwork on Dribble that kind of inspired what we ended up with by Andy Selimov. Um, and I'm going to link this up down in the description. Go show this guy some love. Really amazing work. I absolutely love the colors that he chose. But anyway, let's jump over here to Adobe Illustrator where we're going to create a new document, 2560 by 1440 uh, width and height wise. And I'm going to go ahead and choose create. And there we go. We've got our new document. Now I'm going to come down here to the layers panel. There's this little pop out menu. I'm going to choose that and choose panel options. And then I'm going to select other. And I'm going to make my, my uh, thumbnails here about like 60 pixels, just a little bit bigger. So it's easier for us to see what's going on over here. Uh, and then I'm going to, I'm going to name this layer by double clicking on it. I'm going to name it content. And then I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to double click and I'm going to name this layer colors because the first thing I want to do here is create my color scheme. Now I already have the colors picked out, but you can just follow right along and copy these colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the rectangle tool over here. I'm going to click once and I'm going to go with a, let's go with the 200 by 200 pixel rectangle, right? Nice and big, easy for us to see. Uh, we can grab our move tool up here and we can just move it over. Now this rectangle, if I deselect it, I don't know if you can tell, but it has a black border around it. See that the white fill black border. So I'm going to select that. The stroke actually is what it's called. And over here we can see, yep, white fill black stroke. Let's select the stroke. And then we're going to hit this little none icon just to get rid of that stroke. We only want a color, no stroke. Now we want to change the fill color. So I'm going to come over here and double click on the fill and the color that we're looking for. And you just type this right here into this little input field is 000 F15. All right. So this is going to be like the, the dark blue of the, the space sky that we use. Now I'm going to hold down my alter option key and I'm going to drag a copy of this out right over like that. And by the way, it's automatically aligning because under view, I have smart guides here turned on so they can be helpful for something like this. For the second color, we're going to double click on the fill again, and we're going to set this to FFF 6C7. So this is a very light sort of beige color. All right. Now we're going to alter option, just drag out another copy. And then the color of this one, here is going to be FF4E00. There we go. This is more of like a hot orange. We're going to drag another copy of this out. Double click to edit the fill here. And this one is 3145D1. And oh, that's the wrong color. Hang on. It's actually 30, 31. 4D51. That's got to be it. There we go. Yeah, more of that kind of washed out, taupey sort of aqua color. All right, we're going to alter option, drag a copy of that out. So we're going to double click on this fill. And now we want 46665A. And you can see this is kind of like almost a washed out, flat, dark, greenish color. And another color here, we're going to double click and we're going to go 5784. 76. And you can see it's just a, a little bit lighter version of this color right here. And now we have one more color. So let's just drag another uh, rectangle out here and hold down that alt, not alt or option key. Excuse me. I'm going to double click on fill in this case, and we're going to go FF 4 E uh, zero, zero at whoop. We already have that color. I'm sorry. Let's try this again. Let's go FF a four, four, zero. There we go. That's the color we're missing. So kind of that yellowish uh, orange color. We'll end up pairing it with the orange later. But this is our basic color scheme, just like this. So I'm just going to grab these colors and I'm going to hit Command or Control G. That's going to group them together. And then up here in the top bar, I'm going to choose to align to the horizontal centers. So it's just going to align it right above the document as we're working on this here. And probably what I'll also do over here in the layers panel, I'll just click the area between the eyeball and the red bar just to lock that layer, uh, at least temporarily, just so I don't fuss with it or move it around anywhere. And just to tidy things up, I think I will move the pathfinder and just drop it in here just because we will be using it a little bit. And docked is a little bit cleaner and nicer than undocked. And the next thing we're going to need to do is come up to Illustrator Preferences. Now on a Mac, it's Illustrator Preferences. On a PC, Preferences are under the Edit menu here. So Illustrator Preferences, and we're going to come down to Guides and 
grid. And what we're interested in is make sure that grids in back is checked off. We want that shut off and we want a grid line every 72 pixels and four subdivisions. All right. Now I just have my color as this light gray. You can really have the color, you know, make it anything you want. Really. I'm going to hit OK and we're going to go ahead and go view show grid. And we're also going to go view and choose snap to grid. That's going to really help us here when we begin drawing our rocket ship shape. So let's select the content layer here and let's actually just drop our background in place. So I'm grabbing the rectangle tool there. I'm going to click a single time and I'm going to go 2560 wide by 1440 high. This is the size of our document, of course. And then we're going to grab the select tool up there and we're just going to align to the horizontal and vertical centers just like so. And then we can hit the letter I to bring up the eyedropper tool and just sample that very dark blue color. Now, the grid is in the way, but if I just temporarily shut off the grid command apostrophe or control apostrophe, you can see that it is kind of a, a very dark, dark bluish purplish color, which is great. Command apostrophe to turn that grid back on. And really, so we don't mess with the background, you can even open up the content layer and just lock that background layer as well, that background shape really. Uh, that way we don't accidentally drag it or move it anywhere. So now let's set our fill color here. I'm going to double click that and I'm just going to set it to white just to make this kind of easy to see. Uh, I'm going to hit OK. We're going to grab the pen tool. Now I'm going to zoom in just a little bit because we, we want our rocket to be, we don't want it to be too big. I'll put it to you that way, but we also don't want it to be too small, but kind of in this case, smaller is better than larger. So I'm going to zoom in a touch here and we're going to create one half of the rocket ship. So I'm going to click with my pen tool and I'm going to drag out. Let's see, I'm dragging one cell, two cell, three cells over. So if you can see that I'm dragging my, I clicked to apply that, that anchor point right there. And then I'm dragging one, two, three cells. You know what? I'll go four cells diagonally over just like that. And then we're going to come down, I don't know, a bunch of cells, something right up that looks kind of like that. Um, and then I'm going to click and once more, I'll just, I'll zoom in here and I'll go one cell, two, three, four cells, just like that. So you can see we've created sort of this little half moon, not really half moon, but you know, half of what will be the fuselage of our rocket. Hold down the alter option key and click on this bottom anchor point, And that's going to just suck that tangent handle back in. And we can just join the shape, just boom, just like that. Now what we need to do, we can shut the uh, grid off temporarily, command and the apostrophe key. Let's just zoom out and look at the size of our rocket ship. That's probably about great. That's, that's a nice size. And we'll, we'll be able to adjust and tweak it here in just a second. Uh, but what we want to do is duplicate this. So grab the selection arrow and go edit copy. And then we're going to choose edit paste in front. It's just going to paste the copy of that. You can see we have two paths over here in our layers panel. It's going to paste that right in front. Then we're going to go object transform and choose to reflect this. And we're going to reflect it here along the vertical axis. So if I turn on preview, you're going to see it's going to flip it just side to side. Perfect. Okay, great. That's exactly what we want. Now, if I hit command apostrophe, which of course turns my grid back on, I can just drag this right over and it's going to click right together. And there's the base of our rocket ship. Now, before I join these two shapes together, I'm going to select them both because maybe I want to make the rocket ship a little fatter. So I'm going to grab one of these side uh, anchor handles and I'm going to hold down my alter option key and pop it out one. Yeah, I kind of like that. Maybe I'll pop it out another one, something like that. Let's zoom back a little bit. Yeah, something like that's pretty cool. Uh, maybe what we'll do is grab our direct selection tool and just select the anchor point. So I'm just dragging a selection over that top corner of both of the uh, of the little shapes that we drew. Hold down the shift key and hit the up arrow key one, two times. Maybe something like that. Eh, me, what happens if I push it down? Eh, I like it when it's pushed up. So I'll push it up just a little bit, just kind of elongate, elongate what we've got going on here. And what I think I'll do is select the ones on the bottom here and I'll nudge that up, maybe about one. It's just a little bit of pushing and pulling here. Um, and I, I kind of like the way that looks. That looks kind of neat. Let's join these two shapes together though. So I'm just going to select both shapes. I went back to my selection tool there. Select both shapes. And over here in the Pathfinder panel, we're going to choose this merge option. Boom. You can see now it's one path down here in our layers panel. Great. Uh, and at this point, I can grab my direct selection tool again. And here I could just straight click the point on the bottom and I could just nudge it upward a little bit. Uh, if I'm looking to kind of like pinch it in, eh, you know what? I think that's actually probably, it's probably good the way it is. Uh, but of course we need to trim it kind of flat down here on the bottom to give it more of a distinctive rocket shape. So we'll do that using the rectangle tool and I'm just going to drag out a rectangle and clip off the very bottom of the rocket. Maybe that's not enough. Maybe we'll go up another uh, sort of cell. All right, great. I'm going to select both of these shapes now, the rectangle and the rocket fuselage. And over here in the pathfinder panel, we're going to use this subtract front. So when we do that, you can see it's just going to clip the bottom of the rocket right off. So we now have this shape uh, for the base of our 
rocket. So now let's select the rocket and copy it. So we'll go edit, copy the whole rocket, and we're gonna paste this in front. And what we're looking to do is just get half of that rocket back. So I'm gonna take my rectangle tool, and maybe it's easier here if I turn the grid on so you can see what's going on, command and the apostrophe key. And I'm just gonna drag out an, a big rectangle that splits the rocket in half, right? You see how that splits the rocket in half, okay? Now over here on the layers panel, you can see we've got the rectangle we just drew and two copies of the rocket fuselage. I'm gonna hold down my shift key, and I'm gonna select the little circle there. So we select the top rectangle and the top rocket fuselage. And I'm gonna choose this option right here. This is the intersect option. And what it's gonna do is it's only gonna save the part of the path that is you know, overlapping, which is sort of that half of the rocket. The reason I'm doing that is because we want to start colorizing our rocket. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit here and let's check out our colors. I'm gonna shut off the grid once more. You know the hot key, right? And we're gonna grab our eyedropper tool. And for the shadow, and this is gonna be the shadow side of the rocket, we're gonna choose not the lightest of sort of the, the washed out greenish colors, but the, the middle color, not the darkest one, but the middle one. So there we go, that's the shadow side of the rocket. Grab your selection tool, select the main body of the rocket, hit the letter I to open or select the eyedropper tool, and we're gonna go with the lighter color. And this is gonna be the base of our rocket. So half of it's sort of the shadow side, half of it the highlight side. Now let's zoom in on the rocket a little bit here and I'm gonna turn my grid back on and we need to create a little ring near the top of, uh, of our rocket. So we're gonna do that using the ellipse tool and you can really play around a bunch of different ways uh, to try to create this, but I'm gonna hold down my shift key and let's try, eh, see that's gonna be too much of a steep curve. So maybe we'll create a ring like this. There we go, something like that. I'm gonna fill this ellipse with white. So I'm gonna double click on the fill here and just go with white just so we can kinda, we can kinda picture what's going on here. That looks good. And I'm gonna duplicate this. So we're gonna go edit, copy. Now with this, I'm gonna edit and paste in back because we're gonna punch a hole in the middle of this. But what I need to do is just make this whole shape a little bit bigger. So hold down shift and the alt key. This would be shift and option on the Mac and just expand outward. Yeah, probably something like that. Now what we have are two ellipses, as you can see here in the layers panel, we wanna select them both. So grab the selection tool and just select both of those ellipses. And back here in the Pathfinder panel, we wanna just knock that middle area out using the subtract or minus front icon, there we go. And now what we need to do is just save the part that's overlapping uh, over our rocket fuselage. So once more, what we'll do is we'll select the bottom part of the rocket fuselage, we'll go edit, copy, and then we'll choose edit paste in front. And this is just gonna paste it right in front of the original rocket fuselage. We wanna move it all the way up to the front here. So we'll go object, arrange, bring to front. You can see, there we go. It's now sitting on top of everything else. Hold down shift, select the little ring, and once more look to the Pathfinder panel. And we're gonna to choose to just intersect this bad boy. And there it is, but you can see it's taken on the color of the frontmost shape, which is the fuselage of the rocket. So we'll make this white again up here in our color palette, uh, up here in our color panel, excuse me. I can just hit the, the white stripe, and there we go. We've got that little white. It's maybe not quite as bent around the rocket as I would like it, but I think it'll work. It kind of looks bomb or rocket worthy, right? And let's turn our grid on, and we're going to do the same thing here for a ring kind of going around the base of the rocket. So let's grab the ellipse tool once more. Our fill color is already white, and we're going to just drag out an ellipse. I'm gonna go for a really very thin, narrow oval shape, and I'm gonna go Command or Control C to copy, and then we're gonna go Edit and see the hotkey is Command or Control B to paste in back, and we're gonna just expand this out just like we did before, holding on Shift and Alt or Option. That looks good. I don't know if that's quite enough, actually. Maybe what we'll do is we'll just pull this straight down. That might be a little bit too big of a ring down there at the bottom, but hey, let's see what we get. So now let's grab our selection tool, select both of these rings, and we'll once more use the minus front. And we're just gonna have this little stripe here running across the bottom of the rocket. And again, to just clip it in place, we'll just duplicate up the back part of the rocket, Commander Control C, Commander Control F to paste it in front, and then Object Arrange, Bring to Front. And we'll select, hold down by holding down shift, we can also select the ring that we just created and then go ahead and choose the intersect option. And once more, just fill that little ring with white. Now it's looking a little bit like a football, which is fine because we still need to add a window and some antenna stuff and the fins and landing gear and all that good stuff uh, to really get the show on the road, but we're making progress. In fact, let's zoom out and let's colorize both of our rings. So I can just select both of these rings by shift clicking them, uh, grab my eyedropper tool and the, the rings and the fins are gonna have this darkest, darkest of the taupey greenish colors. There we go. And you can see there our rings are looking nice and fine. Okay, let's zoom back in here. And I'm gonna turn the grid back on, Command, Apostrophe, Control, Apostrophe on the PC. And we're gonna create a little window uh, in our little spaceship because what good is a spaceship if you don't have a nice little window? Uh, let's go with the ellipse tool. I'm going to start right here in the middle of this uh, grid line. Hold down the Alt or Option key and just drag out 
I feel like a, a bigger window is better than a smaller window, right? Yeah, let's go with something like that. I think we'll keep this the color of the fins and the, the little rings that run around our rocket ship, but we're gonna give this a stroke. We'll give it a white stroke just to really set it off. So go ahead and select the stroke. And then we're going to, over here in the, the tool panel that is, I selected the stroke to, to bring it to the four, if you will. And uh, over here in the color panel, I'm going to just select white. That's gonna give me a white stroke. And then over here in the stroke panel, I'm gonna make sure this is probably like 10, points, something like that. That's probably nice. But maybe what we can do is choose to align the stroke to the inside of the shape, right? Say align stroke to inside. Let's do that. Yeah, I kind of dig that. It makes the window a little bit smaller, kind of makes it a little bit more manageable. Um, that's really nice. Next, we want to create a couple horizontal lines on the body of the rocket. So I'm going to grab the pen tool. Let's just go with that. And let's flip, swap our fill and stroke color. See the little arrow right there, swap fill and stroke. Let's do that. And whoop, make sure we don't have the window selected. So just come up here to select and just choose deselect. And that's going to make sure nothing's selected. Uh, we're going to swap our fill and our stroke. And then since this, you know, dark blue taupe color is the stroke, we don't need the stroke. So we're going to choose, oh, I'm sorry, we need the stroke. We don't want the fill. So we're going to bring the fill up to the four and we're going to just choose none. All we want is a stroke. So now we're going to just click with the pen tool and bring it right across. There we go. We've got one stroke. And let's maybe do another line right here. There, something like that looks good. And I'm gonna shut off the grid just for a quick second and check out what we've got. If I zoom back out, you can see we've got a nice little rocket here. Um, now, if you think it's just getting a little out of hand, the strokes are too big, which maybe I wouldn't necessarily disagree with you. Let's just try downsizing the strokes. Maybe take them down to about seven points and maybe even make these a little smaller here uh, on the inside. I just scaled them backward. Uh, that, that looks good. And let's select this ellipse here and take this back to, what was it, seven points, something like that. Let me shut the grid off and zoom out. Yeah, that's probably a little bit better. That window might still be a little bit too big, um, but maybe we'll fine tune it when we shut off snap to grid if it's still bugging me and still looking like it's just way too big. But instead of letting that bug us, let's go ahead and start creating the landing gear, the fins. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to select this window that we just created and we're going to copy it. So edit copy and then we'll go edit paste in front and I'm going to bring this guy straight downward to the to basically so the, the center of this little circle is right here, is right one cell above this stripe that we place down here at the bottom, right? So we're gonna go right like that. And then we're gonna de decrease the size of this circle by holding on the Shift and Alt or Shift and Option keys and just boom, punch that back. It's gonna make the circle a bit smaller and we can get rid of the stroke altogether. So right now the stroke is brought to the front here in our tool panel. So we can just choose none to get rid of that stroke. And now we just have uh, that circle. Now we're going to grab our direct selection tool and we're going to select just the anchor point on the bottom and I'm going to nudge it down kind of until I think it's in the right place. So I'm going to go shift and down arrow key one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight. Maybe we'll go down eight cells for the size of my rocket that works. You want to kind of go about, you know, this far, however far that is. Maybe I'll go one more nine. So there we go. We've extended our landing gear a little bit. Now we want this point down here to be sharp. We want it to be super pointy. So here underneath the pen tool, we have this anchor point tool, which if we just click on that anchor point, it's going to get rid of the tangent handles there and give us a perfect point. Now I'm going to go command apostrophe, control apostrophe to shut off my grid. And you can see we have the first sort of front facing fin uh, for our uh, for our little spaceship here. Now let's turn the grid back on and we might have to desize or downsize a little bit. It might be a little bit too big, but again, we can't really do much downsizing while we have our snap to grid turned on, but I want the snap to grid here for just a quick second to create these fins and then we'll adjust the sizing and kind of perfect everything. So let's go back and grab the pen tool. And this is where you kind of just gotta, you know, draw a fin that you think looks good. Um, there's really no right or wrong way. Uh, just, you know, make sure it looks good. So I'm gonna click and I'm gonna drag out a couple and then I'm gonna come down this way. Yeah, maybe something like that. And then I'm gonna come all the way over. So we're, we're kind of creating a, a nice shaped fin here. And then I'm gonna hold down my alter option key. I'm gonna suck the tangent handle back in. Uh, so it's just, the tangent handle is coming straight out of that point down one cell. And then I'm gonna loop it over one cell. So this is gonna be sort of the foot of the landing gear, if you will. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down my Alter Option key and I'm gonna pull that tangent handle out, just one cell, just kind of like that. And then I'll come up to close to the bottom of the spaceship, maybe like right about there, or maybe I'll go up one cell, some sort of two cells off the bottom of the spaceship. I'm gonna click and I'm gonna pull in something like that. 
and then I'll just join this shape off. So that's going to be sort of the the outer uh, fin of the, our little spaceship here. So you can see it's a little bit big and bulbous and all of that. Uh, but again, we'll be able to really fine tune the size and uh, you know make it look a little bit better once we shut off Snap to Grid. Now I'm going to grab my selection tool and we'll select this fin. We already have it drawn, right? So we can just go edit, copy, and then edit, paste in front. And uh, we'll drag this guy straight over, kind of right here. We'll adjust it in just a second, but let's go Object Transform Reflect. And again, ref reflect along the vertical axis. You can see it's flipping it for us. Go ahead and hit OK. And what I'm looking for is I started with this point right here on this fin. I started right there, so I'm two cells in off the side. So I know that this point right here in this fin needs to go one, two cells. It needs to go right there in terms of uh, exact placement. So voila, right there, it's the exact same placement now on both sides of the spaceship. Now, if I shut off the grid, you can see it looks a little ludicrous. It looks, you know, huge. It does look more like a bomb, in fact, than uh, a spaceship. And I think that part of it is the window being just too big and the fins are probably a little bit too big. They need to be streamlined a little bit. So we're gonna do this. Number one, we're gonna do it by sending these two fins behind our spaceship. So right now, I'm gonna collapse my stroke panel here so we can see what's going on in the layers panel. In fact, I'll collapse the pathfinder as well. These fins are way up in the front, but they really need to be way down here in the back. So what we'll do is we'll drag these guys down and I'll drag this guy down. And you may say, well, why not just send it right to the back? Well, we don't want it to go behind our background. So I'll select both these layers here and just drag them beneath the rocket. So right there, that helps kind of shape them up a little bit, make them look a little bit smaller, which isn't too bad. Uh, but we still need to do a little bit more. So let's go view and turn off Snap to Grid. And now what we can do, number one, is downsize the size of our window. Hold down Shift and Option, Shift and Alt on the PC. And we'll just make that window a little bit smaller. And maybe we'll downsize the stroke to about five points while we're at it. There we go. That's a little bit more manageable in terms of the size of the window. And then these two... Uh, these two fins, we can go ahead and make them a little bit smaller. So I'll probably just hold down my shift key and drag this up. And I can see, you see that sort of, you get that little heads up display that says, yeah, right, right about there, you're at 100 pixels. That's probably good. You can see up here too in the top toolbar, a width of 100 pixels. So maybe I'll just square that off at 100 uh, by 160 right there. Okay, cool. And then I'll do the same thing over here. So I'll just take this, I'll say look, 100 and 160 voila, something like that. And now you can see they're not lined up as they should be. Well, we can take care of that. Uh, let's actually select all three of these shapes here. And we're going to choose align to key object. And right now I have it selected as the key object by just clicking on it, the middle fin. Let me get out of that. Let's select all three of those shapes again. If I choose to align to the key object, I can click on a shape out of the shapes that I have selected, like the middle fin, and that becomes the key object. So then I can say, look, align all the shapes to the vertical bottom. So now all of these fins have the exact same point where they would sort of touch the ground, if you will. That's perfect, right? And now I can just deselect this, and there we go. We have some fins for our rocket ship, and uh, we're ready to kind of get back into business. Let's go ahead before we go any further and draw a little antenna for the nose of our rocket. We're gonna do this using the pen tool. Uh, so I'll grab the pen tool and if you have smart guides turned on, this is where it's also very, very helpful, smart guides turned on, we can hover right over the exact anchor point and Illustrator will tell us that. And we can just hold down shift and drag straight up and we can say, yep, right about there is probably good for our antenna. Hit the enter key to just commit and keep that as your uh, piece of the path. And then all we need to do here is just flip our fill color to our stroke color. So we stroke this and let's make it about as wide as the window uh, trim here is. So that's five points. Let's go one, two, three, four, five, something like that. that that's not too bad. Um, I'm going to grab the selection tool. We need to now nudge it downward because you see that right there, how it's not uh, it's not connected really to the spaceship. So let's use our arrow key and just nudge it downward a little bit. And also here, I'm going to double click on the stroke panel to really open this up. And we want to give this rounded cap. That's going to just, you see what that's doing? It's giving a nice rounded cap at the top and down here where it connects to the spaceship that that looks much better you could send this also behind the entire spaceship which might not be a bad idea uh, so we could just send this backward i'll collapse the stroke panel here and we'll just drag this sucker down so i'll drag this guy down and down just like that and now the antenna comes perfectly out of the back of the spaceship and if you wanted to put like a little node onto the antenna you could do that as well we can just select this antenna edit copy 
and then we'll go edit paste in front and now what we'll do is just squash this thing way up make it really really tiny and then just increase the weight of the strokes so we could go like you know i don't know bring it up to like 10 and there we go we have like a nice sort of node if you will on that and i think the antenna overall is too thick so let's just select that and let's not let's cut it in half let's take it down to like three three points yeah that's much better and then let's select the tiny little path up here and make this like five or six. Yeah, five. That looks a lot better. Yes, yeah, so there we go. A little bit more of a manageable antenna there on the front of the on the front of the rocket. So now that we have our rocket, it's time to draw the flames that are coming out of the bottom of it before we get to all that dust and ignition nonsense that's being kicked up on the ground. Now again, I can't stress enough. It's really helpful to turn on smart guides because it's going to really help us exactly line our flame up with the bottom of the rocket. So let's go ahead and grab the pen tool. And this is where you can just kind of have fun with it. We're going to draw the outermost flame first, and then we'll do sort of that inner flame. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the stroke to the fill. And we're going to choose, because we're doing the outer flame, which is going to be more of the orange flame. So we're going to take this, this color right here and make that our fill color. So I'm going to grab my eyedropper tool. Boom, that's our fill. And now I'll come back down here grab the pen tool and let's zoom in down here on the the butt end of the rocket here and we're going to start by just clicking on that anchor point it's no we're not actually selecting the anchor right and then i'm going to pull way out this way and then i'm going to come down here we'll make it we'll give it a nice healthy hefty sized flame and i'm going to come over so i'm lined up exactly with the middle of the rocket ship and i'm going to go yeah, something probably just like that. Now I'm going to hold down my alter option key and just click on that anchor point to suck that tangent handle back in. In fact, I'll continue holding down my alter option key and I'll pull a new tangent handle out. And then let's just join this flame off down over here. We'll make it a nice wide flame, right? It doesn't have to be, uh, it does not have to be symmetrical at all. And then we'll hold down the alter option key and click on that anchor and just join these bad boys together. So we have sort of our outer flame. Now, obviously the flame needs to be beneath this uh, fin. So we'll go object arrange and we can choose send backward this doesn't send it all the way to the back this just starts sending it down the layer stack itself note the hotkey command and the left square bracket key so we can use that see it doesn't look like it did anything but if we look in our layers panel it did send it down one we just it's not the fin so we don't see it we need to get it beneath the fin down here so let's do command left bracket command left bracket and there we go it's now where we need it to be let's create sort of the second inner flame now i'm going to grab the pen tool let's begin you know basically the same way here and we'll go ahead and create just a little bit of a smaller flame. It doesn't have to be exact. Something kind of like that. Hold down the Alter Option key. And I'm going to pull back this way to create uh, create my little flame. So this, this the inner flame. Hold down my Alter Option key again. And then just finish that off. Now I'm going to zoom out. And we're going to go ahead and sample. Not the darkest orange. That's what it is now. But this kind of yellowish color here on the end. So we'll grab the eyedropper tool with that inner flame still selected. Just grab that kind of yellow color. Great. And now we're going to use that command left bracket, ding, 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 to just get it down beneath the old uh, fin there. So we can look at it. If it doesn't quite look right, that's fine. We can grab the direct selection tool, the white arrow right up here, and we can grab the point of the flame and we can adjust it whatever way we think, uh, you know, appropriate. So we could just say like something like that. There we go. That's what we want. That looks much better. Cool. So now that we have our rocket, you know, drawn for all intents and purposes, actually one thing we can do is zoom way in on this and we can go ahead and grab the ellipse tool and we can just draw a little tiny circle up here and just fill this with white and this can sort of serve to be the highlight on the you know sort of the bulb of the 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 little window in fact we can go to the transparency panel knock the opacity down to like 65 percent or something just to make it look like something's interacting with it there see that just a nice little highlight never hurt anybody did it but now let's go ahead and start drawing the dust that's being kicked up on the ground uh, by this rocket so we're going to grab our ellipse tool and we're going to set our foreground color to this base color so grab the eyedropper tool and just go ahead and sample that color great back to the ellipse tool and let's just begin drawing circles so I'm gonna start just a little bit of a distance beneath my rocket so I'm gonna start like down here and I'm holding I'm gonna hold down my shift key because I want to have perfect circles so I'm gonna go like one circle there I'm gonna go like another circle here and then I'm gonna go a much bigger circle you can hold down the space bar and move the circle before you actually have to commit to it great and then we hold down shift and go with a smaller circle then I'm going to hold down shift. I'm going to go with a much larger circle, something like that. Uh, then I'll go with kind of a medium-sized circle down here. And then I'll go with another sort of uh, medium-ish size circle there. Great. Now let's kind of establish the, uh, the, the circles on the other side. I just think this is kind of like a cool style 
uh, to go ahead and and create this kind of dust cloud. And it's a little bit uh, in the in the vein of what that that bit of inspiration uh, looked like. That was just a bunch of different circles, right? The the smoke cloud beneath that space shuttle and the initial image I showed you. Great, there we go. Something like that's cool. Let's go with a small, uh, a little bit smaller than that. Ba boom. And let's go with a, you know, rather large circle here to finish things off on the end. And maybe even one more circle uh, we'll do all the way down over here just for good measure. Great. So we have sort of the outer wall of our circle constructed. Let's now, well, we probably want to create one more circle here at the top just to seal that off. And maybe even another circle over here just because we can. And then grab the pen tool. And we're, what we're going to do is just begin drawing through these circles, right? Again, remember our fill is still this beige color. And we're just looking to kind of fill all this in. Okay, you see how this works? As long as we come through like the middle of our, our circles, we just get a nice dust cloud. But of course, it's not the dust cloud yet because we need to select the whole bit. And we could just make this one full shape by opening up the Pathfinder panel and choose to merge this. So just go ahead and merge it. Boom. There is our sort of dust cloud shape. Great. So we have that made. We have that in place. We could even nudge it downward a little bit if we want. We can move it around a little. Um, I think that's about perfect for us right there. Uh, now, it is sticking out of the bottom of uh, our scene here. So we're going to rectify this by just masking this entire master content layer. So what we'll do is we'll select the background down here. I need to unlock it, select the background, and copy it. So edit, copy. Just copy it to the, uh, the, the clipboard, and we'll lock that layer again so we don't mess with it. Come back up to the content layer and select that little circle. Now we'll come to the transparency panel. Double click on the tab, double click on the tab. There we go. Now double click to add a mask. And we want to leave clip checked on and go edit, paste in front, and we just need to set the fill of our shape here to perfect white. So double click on the fill and go white. Oh, let's go white. There we go. And you can see now everything that's on that layer is going to be clipped to within this white box right here on our mask. And that's basically going to mask any artwork we draw on this content layer. In fact, you can see the word content has that dotted line under it indicating that there is a layer mask. Uh, or a mask, I should say, on that layer. So cool. So now if we draw more dust clouds and stuff down here, we won't have to worry about it, you know, appearing down here off of uh, our, our little graphic. All right, so let's create an inner dust cloud here. We're going to use the same exact technique here uh, with the circles. So let's go with like a, you know, smaller circle, maybe a little bit larger of a circle, and maybe even a little bit larger of a circle, something like that. We'll go with a nice little baby circle here in the middle, and I'll pick things up a little with a larger circle. And then just, I don't know, a couple smaller circles just to finish things out. We're just looking to add a little bit of visual interest here. Go ahead and select those circles just like that. And now we are also selecting, I don't know if you can see the blue outline around our original dust path. We don't want to select that, so just hold down shift and click on that. Now we're just selecting those circles. Great. Let's go ahead and merge these circles together up here to the Pathfinder panel. Merge. Beautiful. And now we're going to fill them with this kind of, you know, the, the same exact color as the inner flame color there. So grab the eyedropper tool and just sample that color. Voila. And we have sort of of just some what's going to look almost like texture there in the middle of our dust cloud. Now we need to join the rocket, if you will, to this dust cloud. And we're going to do that using the pen tool. And this, again, I'm, I'm going to stress this time and time again, probably. Under view, you want to make sure Smart Guides is turned on. It's really going to be helpful for what we're about to do. So let's go ahead and just select by clicking right there when we know we're clicking exactly on the anchor point. Click, hold down shift, and just come straight down. And then pull straight, acro uh, straight across, holding down the shift key. Click, hold down shift, come straight up to the other anchor, and then shift and come straight across to join that shape. Now this shape, I want it to be the same exact color as the dust cloud. So let's hit the letter I to grab the eyedropper tool. And we already have the shape selected to just sample right there from the dust cloud. Now the problem is pretty clear that we can't see the flame or the fin or anything else. So let's go command and left bracket until until we start seeing things that we like. So there we go. Everything is the way it needs to be now. So if we zoom out, you can see that we have a rocket ship blasting and pushing all this dust around. Um, we have our flame in place and everything looks just right. But here's where we begin to make things a little bit more interesting. So we're going to start adding some atmosphere around the rocket. It's all going to begin with just some simple circles. Literally, just grab the ellipse tool, hold down shift, and draw a few circles here uh, just beside, you know, all of this, this mess that's happening here. So let's go like one circle. I'll go with a bigger circle there. I'll go with a tiny little circle here, 
tiny little circle there, maybe like a tiny circle out there. Great. So if we just back out, you can see we're just adding what looks like just some like sparkly kind of fragmenty stuff. Um, that's all great. Cool. And let's throw some clouds in the sky. Actually, let's throw some stars and different shapes in the sky. Then we'll throw some clouds in the sky and look at playing around with maybe a planet and a satellite and stuff like that. So here's how I go ahead and create uh, the, the stars and what's going to go in the sky uh, around the rocket. We want to begin by creating a simple circle. So we're just gonna come up here, grab the ellipse tool, and I'm gonna draw a very small circle, a little tiny circle, you see that? And that actually might even be too big. So let's zoom in on it, select it, and we'll make it even a little bit smaller. Maybe something like that, all right? Select that, and you wanna go Window, Symbols. So open up your Symbols panel, there it is. And over here in the Symbols panel, go ahead and hit the New Symbol icon, great. Now it's gonna ask you for a name. I'm just gonna name the Stars. There we go, cool, we've got that. We can delete this bit of artwork out here on our stage, cool. Now we're going to create a little bit of like maybe a sparkling star. We're gonna use the pen tool and we're just gonna create a simple line. So just uh, boom, a line like that, hit the enter key so we just have that one little path. And we want to flip our fill and our stroke, so let's just flip those, great. And we wanna go over to our stroke panel, which is right here, double click on that to open it up. And we wanna give this those rounded caps. So just select that to make sure we have our nice rounded caps. Maybe make this two points, there we go. And then grab your selection tool and go edit, copy, and then we'll go edit, paste in front. And then we'll just hold down our shift key, we have the, still have the selection tool here, hold down our shift key, and then just rotate this so we have a nice little plus, right? And let's just zoom out to make sure this is pretty small. Yeah, we want these little pluses to be pretty small. I'm gonna select both of the pluses and we're going to go Object Expand and we're gonna expand just the stroke. There is no fill here, so I'm gonna uncheck fill. We're gonna expand the stroke and what that's gonna do is it's gonna convert these strokes to fills. I'm gonna hit OK. You can see now those strokes have been converted to fills, great. And we can just merge these shapes together. So merge them and we have a nice little plus. So let's select that plus and let's come over here to our symbol panel and choose to create a new symbol. Voila, and we'll name this, you know, I don't know, Sparkle or something. Well, Sparkle, if I can, spe if I can spell Sparkle. There we go. So we have our two symbols, the little star and the little sparkle. So I'm going to select the sparkle that's out here and get rid of it. All right, let's zoom out a little bit so we can get an overview of the entire document. And now we're going to grab the symbol sprayer tool right here. I'm going to grab that and we'll begin with just the, the stars and we'll just begin spraying these around. In fact, you can double click on the tool and up will pop the symbolism tool options where you can choose a diameter for the spray can, the intensity, uh, the symbol set density, and a bunch of different things, scrunching and sizing and spinning and all sorts of stuff like that. I'm not going to mess with any of this. I'm going to leave it here. This is what I'm using. If you want to copy exactly what I'm using, go for it. Uh, but really, there's not really a wrong way to do this. This is just where you can kind of spray around and have a little bit of fun. So you can see I'm just spraying in some stars. There we go. Cool. And you can see as I spray, uh, this sort of box containing all of these is uh, it, it automatically expanding and getting larger. Uh, so it's, it's, what Illustrator is doing is creating what's called a symbol set. So we have this whole sort of grouping of symbols uh, that we can work with here. Now, I don't really care about working with these as symbols. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to collapse the stroke panel because it's just big and in the way. I have this symbol set here. What I'm going to do is go object expand. And in this case, we're going to expand the object because the object is that symbol set. So I'm going to hit OK. And now it's just going to be a group of all of these different little circles. That's great because what I can do is I can easily change the color of these now. So I could just, you know, use my uh, my eyedropper and set them all to like a yellowish color or an orange or, you know, dark blue. Well, I wouldn't want dark blue because I would blend in, but you get the point. I can change the color very, very easily. So let's go on now to our little pluses and let's spray in some of these. Now, something interesting happens here when we do this. You can see Illustrator says, hey, the selection contains multiple symbol instances or sets. Deselect all to create a new symbol set. Uh, so I'm going to say, okay, because what's happening is all these little shapes are their own little symbols in there. So let's just go select and just deselect everything and begin spraying to create our own new set of symbols. I'm going to undo that. There's too many pluses that got laid down too quickly. I just want these pluses to be very almost far and few in between. Just, just a few of them need to be out there in the, in the sky. There we go, something like that. And once more, we'll go Object Expand and expand this out. I'll go ahead and hit OK. Voila. Now, I think I like these having that very light beige color. I think it works with our color palette. I think it just is nice. It gives some nice depth to the whole image. Uh, I think it really looks cool. But let's go ahead and add a little bit of atmosphere sphere by creating some clouds. Now we're going to do this, and this is kind of cool. We're going to use the ellipse tool. I'll show you how to create one, and then I'll speed it up as I create three more of them. So we're going to grab the ellipse tool, and I'm going to throw a cloud out here. So I'm going to go with like, yeah, I'll go with the shape there. Uh, let's go with another kind of shape like that, and then a third 
maybe just like that. All right, great. I'm gonna grab my selection tool. I'm gonna select all three of these. We're gonna, first thing, after we create them, we're gonna merge them together here using the Pathfinder panel, merge, great. Now we're gonna grab the direct selection tool and we're going to select all of the anchor points just across the bottom. So try to drag a nice little selection across the bottom there. Great, I grabbed all five of those anchor points. And all we wanna do is hit the delete key. So voila, we just knock off the bottom part of this cloud shape. Now to make things interesting, let's apply a gradient here to this. So we'll just say, yeah, throw a black and white gradient in there. And we're going to change the color stops here. So I'm gonna select the gradient slider here. And it would really be easy to make these changes if we had a, a swatch, for instance. So let's just choose uh, which one of these shapes or which one of these colors should we use for the cloud? I'm thinking we'll just go with the beige and we'll just reduce the opacity of the, the cloud itself to make it blend. So what I'll do, I'll unlock the colors. I'm gonna select that very light beige. Well, it's selecting the whole color group. So let's just ungroup this temporarily, ungroup, and just select that light beige. Now we'll go to our swatches panel. If you don't have swatches open, you can go window and swatches. And what this will do if we hit the new swatch icon is it'll just use the fill of the selected shape. So we'll go boom, new swatch. There we go. It's that beige. Hit OK. Great. Now we have a nice swatch that we can play with in terms of gradients. Let's lock up the colors layer again. Select the cloud we were working on. And now we can grab that light beige and drag it right down and drop it on the gradients. This makes it so super easy. Uh, let's drag another instance of this out get rid of that dark color altogether. And what we're going to do is this color stop all the way out here, we're gonna reduce the opacity to zero. So now we've got this color that's just fading from the beige to nothing. Uh, let's go ahead and set this to like negative 90. That looks not too bad. And now we'll start bringing the transparent handle up. So there we go, that's pretty good. But what we now need to do is really just fine tune this. So let's go like negative, yeah, probably negative 97. And then we'll bring some of that color back, something kind of like that. So now we have a nice sort of faded cloud. And if we just select this cloud, go to our transparency panel and set this to an opacity of, oh, I don't know, let's try 10%, something very subtle. We'll get this nice cloud that just drops in and is gonna be a really, really nice atmospheric element. So I'm gonna speed the video up. I'm gonna drop in a few more of these clouds. In fact, I'll move this guy down like here. I'll drop in a couple more clouds and I'll be right back. All right, great, so there we've got some clouds. I'm gonna collapse my transparency panel here just to get it out of the way. Maybe also collapse swatches at this point because we don't really need that. Uh, let's go ahead and create a little planet that can float out here and then we'll check out creating a quick satellite and we'll wrap this thing up. So for our planet, we'll begin with the ellipse tool and we'll just draw, hold, by holding down shift, we'll draw a perfect circle, just stick it out there. And we can even leave that gradient, that's actually not too bad. Uh, and we're gonna create a second circle. In fact, maybe we'll just duplicate this circle. So we'll go edit, copy, edit, paste in front, and now we wanna give this the solid fill. So I can just come down here and choose the solid color fill. There we go. And we'll hold down the Alter Option key and just collapse this down from the top, just like that. And then hold down the Alter Option key again and just pull it straight out from the sides. So you can see this is gonna make like a nice little uh, ring for us. And we'll copy this shape. So we'll go Edit Copy and we'll say Edit Paste in front. And now all we'll do is we'll grab the bottom part of this and just push it upward a little bit. So we'll push that up and then we'll crunch it in from the sides. Let me zoom in on this just a little bit more here. Hold down the Alter Option key and let's just slide this inward. Inward a little, little tiny bit more. There we go, something like that. And now this will give us a perfect ring. So select both of these shapes and we wanna knock that middle section out. So of course we'll use this uh, minus front. Boom, knock that out. And you can see we got this nice, uh, we get this nice ring, but there's a problem. We can still see a little bit of the ring back there. How do we get rid of that? Well, let's just add a simple layer mask. This is gonna be pretty easy. So let's select that center circle, Command or Control C to copy it. Select the outer ring. Double click, let's open up that transparency panel and let's add a layer mask. Click to add that and let's uncheck clip. And now we're gonna go edit, paste in front, which is essentially gonna paste the shape in place. Uh, let's fill the shape with black though. So I'm gonna just go to solid color over here, double click on that and just choose solid black, hit okay. And you can see the problem is we see all this stuff here in the front. Well, in order to not see that, what we can do is come over here underneath the eraser tool, grab the knife tool and just drag a knife cut across the shape just like that. And now we can grab the bottom part of the shape and just delete it. 
So we're not deleting the bottom part of the planet. We just deleted the bottom part of the mask. So the only part of the mask we're saving is the part here that's going to cover the area of that ring. And now it looks like the ring just runs around our little planet. Great. So now we want to get out of the, the layer mask or the opacity mask and select over here. Click on that ring. We're back to our uh, normal layer group. Let's select the ring and the planet. Hit Command or Control G to, uh, to group them together. In fact, I want to open this group up real quick. I want to grab the ring and let's just reduce the opacity of the ring because the ring should probably be a little bit more see-through than the planet itself. So let's set the opacity of this to like 35%, something like that. That looks pretty good. And now let's set the opacity of the entire group. So now we're selecting the entire group planet and ring. Uh, let's set the opacity of this to like 50%. So just really allow it to blend in and hang out back there. And we got this nice little planet. See that nice little planet we got? Stuck it back there. Boom, got a nice little planet. Now let's create a little satellite dish. So this is gonna be pretty easy as well. In fact, let's create a quick new layer and just assemble it out here. I don't wanna do it on the content layer because remember we have that layer mask. So if we start drawing out here, like if I just take the ellipse tool and draw a circle, we're not gonna see anything because the mask is not gonna allow us to see it. So let's just create a new layer real quick and we'll assemble our satellite out here and then we'll move it into place. So let's just create an ellipse first. So just drag out a circle any size. We're just gonna kind of spitball this. And I'm going to grab the direct selection tool and I'm going to select the anchor point right there to the far right and just delete it. So now we get kind of this semicircle shape. Now what we'll do is still with the direct selection tool, drag out a selection over both of those end anchor points and we'll go object, path, join. So we're just going to join that together. This is now a closed shape. And maybe what we'll do, we'll zoom out. We'll, we'll give the space, uh, the, the satellite, excuse me, we'll give it the same color as the spaceship, but I'll show you how we'll make it darker in a second. So let's hit the letter I and we'll just give it, we'll give it like the middle color here, right? So that, that's probably good. Let's zoom in on this and uh, let's create a little antenna that's going to come out of the front of the satellite dish. So grab the pen tool and we'll start right here off the center. Hold down the shift key or just pull a straight path out. Hit enter or return to commit that. Uh, let's flip the fill and the stroke. So we got a nice little stroke there. Go to the stroke panel and we're going to bump this up. One, two, three, four, five, maybe six. Uh, well, we're going to take it to seven points. We went up six points, which six plus one is seven. And we're going to add the rounded cap. There we go. And now to add a little bit of dimension to this satellite dish, let's just grab the pen tool. And again, here's a, a, a point at which having smart guides is going to be just immensely helpful. Line up with that anchor point and let's just pull out a little, um, a little tangent handle. And I'll just pull it out to about right there. And then let's just click on the anchor point down here. And then I'm going to hold down shift and just click to join that path. Now it looks a little funky because it doesn't have a fill. It only has a stroke. So let's come over here and just flip fill and stroke. And what I think I will do is make this much lighter. In fact, maybe let's just straight up fill this with white. Let's see what that looks like. I'm going to just deselect. And part of the problem is that's supposed to be the other side of the satellite dish. So the antenna here, as you can see, it should be on top of the white bit. So if we open this layer up, we can see that this white shape is at the very top. So we just want to drag the antenna right up above that. So just like that. There we go. And now it looks like the antenna is coming out of the middle of our little satellite dish. So we got a little satellite dish happening there. Uh, let's create sort of the, the power pack or whatever it is that, that floats behind uh, satellites so often. And we'll create the little solar panels as well. So let's take this path and we'll just duplicate it. Edit. Copy. And we'll go edit, paste in front, and then we'll just nudge this to the left. So I'm just going to nudge it with my arrow keys to the left, something kind of like that. This will be the stem that connects the satellite dish to the little, you know, controller unit or whatever it is. And we're going to up the weight to like 20 points. We want this to be reasonably, you know, thick. And then we're going to grab the rectangle tool and I'm going to hover over that anchor point. Let me zoom in here. Why am I so far out, right? You can see the illustrator is telling me, yep, that's the anchor point. I can hold down my alter option key and just begin drawing out a rectangle. So I can draw a rectangle out just like that. Now it just has a stroke and not a fill. So let's just flip that. There we go. And then I'm just going to nudge this guy backward to the left, kind of just right about like that. That's probably good. So we kind of have the power pack that's controlling the satellite dish, if you will. And now let's go ahead and take the pen tool and we're going to find the very center of that rectangle we just drew out. See, this again is the advantage of having your smart guides turned on and let's click and hold down shift and just draw out one long uh, path going straight down. Hit enter or return. So we're just left with that path. And then with my selection tool, I'm going to drag this upward until it kind of lines up exactly with that little rectangle. And now let's flip the fill with the stroke. So we give this a, a, a stroke. And what do we make our other stem stroke? About 20 points. So let's make this a little bit narrower at 15 point, something like that. That looks good. 
And now let's construct our little solar panels. So these can be, you know, however you want. I'm going to make little thin ones like this. And I'm going to set them in there, flip my stroke and my fill. Great. And then I'm just going to, I'm going to, using smart guides, I can make sure it's aligned exactly to the middle. There we go. Now hold down alter option and just pull this straight down. And you'll see that the smart guides will even tell me, see that it's saying 75.386 pixels. Both of them are exactly the same distance from the central area of our satellite dish. So that's great. So now we have our entire satellite dish set up, just simple shapes. Uh, we're not going into a crazy amount of detail. Let's just hover over these bad boys, command or control G to group them together. And now we're ready to move them into place. Now we can scale this down, make it a bit smaller. In fact, to make it kind of safe from scaling, right now if we scale it smaller, these uh, strokes are going to remain at 20 points and, and you know 15 points and all of that. So let's go ahead and go Object Expand and choose to just expand the strokes. We don't need to expand the fill. Just expand those strokes, making them fills, which means that they will scale down small with me as I scale my satellite a bit smaller. See that's how everything just maintains proper proportion. Great. So let's take this and let's jump back over here to our layers panel and you can see we have this layer three let's move our satellite down here into the content layer right and I can just get rid of layer three at this point that was just you know a, a working layer if you will so let's move the satellite over here and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit let's bring the satellite I'm gonna tilt it maybe and let's tuck it in over here can we tuck it between some of these stars it needs to be quite a bit smaller because uh, the satellite presumably is way out there in outer space where the rocket is headed now the it really doesn't fit, right? It's just, it's way too bright. It doesn't look right. All we need to do here is go to the transparency panel and reduce the opacity. Let's set it to like 35% or something like that. Maybe even less because we want this to be just a tiny little, you know, an atmospheric element, if you will. So let's try 20% opacity and you can see there it is, our satellite just floating in outer space, hanging out. You know what? Actually, it's a little bit too close to this cloud. Let me move this cloud down a little bit. There we go. Something kind of like that. So let's go ahead and just zoom back in on this and check out our handiwork. And you can see we've we've created this uh, whole rocket illustration. Looks pretty sweet, looks pretty sick. Um, and I actually have here the original sketch. I don't know, I think the camera's gonna be out of focus. Uh, but I have this original sketch that I initially mocked up. Uh, we brought it into Illustrator and I think we did an okay job with it. Um, so if you've enjoyed this tutorial, well, first and foremost, if you followed the whole tutorial and you got to this point, Upload your design that you created to Instagram and tag me. My my Instagram handle is at Tutvid. I would love to see what you've come up with. Um, I get some amazing illustrations that are created through other Illustrator tutorials that I've done that I see on my Instagram feed. I like to go and I'll give you a like, we'll comment, I'll have a little conversation, mix it up a little bit. It's awesome. It's so cool. Uh, so make sure you do that. Again, Instagram at Tutvid. Now, that's going to pretty much bring us to the end of this one for creating a rocket ship illustration in Adobe Illustrator using the symbol sprayer and the pen tool and shape tools and guides and grids and snapping and smart guides and like a hundred other different things that are going to allow you to create your very own rocket illustration that's going to be different every single time you create it. Guys, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.